Hello and how are you? My name is Mohindom Bark and I will come you to our fifth, third lecture of creating a complete inventory management system. As you know, we always do 40 minutes, so I'll go ahead and start our timer. So in the previous lecture, we stopped while we had just designed our form and we had just imported, added DIO in our project for creating the HTTP request. You can even put this one as outside so it can be created only once. Okay, so we are now going to do the logic of sending the information to the server and also receiving the information from the server. So without wasting much time, let's go ahead and get started. So as I, as I was telling you, uh, DO is very simple to use. Just simply create the DO variable. You can create it and put also the method so it can be created once. And then after, you just simply uh, wait for the response. We can just say response is equal to await DO.post. Then here you pass the, the, the what the endpoint while saying the data and then you say data and then here you go ahead and and do what and um, and uh, put the data that can be in JSON. So it will be very smart if we can just convert our data in JSON other than doing what other than uh, manually <laughs> converting it. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and do the logic of first converting our data in JSON. So when we put when we, when we want to send this data here, we shall just simply say uh, our object, for example, which is new user dot what dot to JSON. Okay, to JSON, and then you should be able to do what to convert our data to what to JSON. All right, so let's go ahead and add this method in the user or logged in user model. Okay, so let me go ahead and create it. So this is our method. So this method, of course, it will return a map of what of string and then dynamic. Okay, and you can call it to what to JSON. Remember, we are in our logged in user what you logged in user model. Okay, so after you go ahead and so this is how you just design it. You just said to JSON as I've written it exactly here, and then you go ahead and uh, open curl bracket. Sorry, to JSON, open bracket, and then do like this, and then you return. Okay, so when you say return, uh, you open these uh, curl brackets, and then start returning the values. So I'm going to return here the name and its value, the name and its value, something like this. For example, I'll just simply say, uh, so you say uh, ID, and then you put there ID, something like that. So username, you put username. Password, you put password. So it's going to convert both of them as I'm showing you here. Okay. So you get every variable that is on top there and do what I'm just doing here. Okay. So we have our ID, which is on top there. And then we have our username. We have our password. Okay. We have a name. We have avatar. We have token. So almost everything that we have there, all the variables I have created that. We have updated art. Okay. Uh, we have uh, uh, company ID, we have a uh, first name, we have last name, uh, we have uh, phone number and phone number two. Uh, what next do we have? Uh, we need uh, phone number two is over. We need address and put address uh, after address. The next we're going to put uh, six and then six and then the next thing I'm going to put DOB then DOB and then lastly status and then email all right so those are the fields that we do what that we need um, uh, to convert to JSON so this is how you can write a method of converting a variable to JSON however I'll show you another better way of how we can automate all these things all right, so that is it. Uh, now I'll come back here to our register screen, this one here. Okay, uh, now let's go ahead and uh, do the registration. So uh, now let's first test and see if everything is okay. So let me just simply come and say print, and then I say uh, new user dot to JSON. Okay, you should be able to do what 
and then I can maybe say set to string. I should be able to and return here on top. So you should be able to put that uh, these values that we shall have entered here in the JSON format, and then we put them in console. So let me come and put here first name uh, Bira, and then last name Sabia, and then email Sabia at gmail dot com, and then uh, phone number zero seven whatever, and then uh, company name Sabia and Sons, okay. Okay, company name Sabi and Sons, and then currency uh, UGX, and then password uh, 4321. I don't want to forget passwords. All right, so if I open here the console, let's try to click on create account. You see, everything is success. Everything has been just converted to what? Uh, to JSON. That is so beautiful. You can even, if you have put that method on your, on your class, you can even use this. Uh, uh, that's JSON encode and then it will automatically invoke, invoke that class like this. You see, it converts them and even surround them with what with quotes. May I always prefer this one, okay? All right, so uh, that's beautiful. That is so 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 beautiful. It converts our data and puts it in JSON, and you've seen how we can do that. So you can convert any object and put it in JSON. So that's a very good thing. Uh, all right now so the next thing we are now going to submit our, our data it's now the time to submit the data so i'll get that and then come so here it's going to be a response okay it's going to be response here okay it's going to be response and then uh, data is going to be uh, i prefer this one json dot encode and then i pass the user like this okay let me hope that one works let me first test it Right, so let me first test that one and see if it is okay. So you see everything is okay. All right, so that's good. Let me remove this toast. This, let me remove this snack bar. I don't need it. Okay, so that is okay. That is very, very okay. Uh, now it's time to send this data to what? To the online. Let me just comment this snack bar here. All right, so now it's time to send the data to online. So I don't want, uh, when the system is loading, I don't want the user to be interacting with what? With the login button, okay? So I want to log the user, not to see this login button, I mean create button when the system is loading. So I'm going to put here a boolean, okay? I'm going to put here a boolean. Oh, there is um, a package that we can use uh, for loading. I don't know whether we shall need it now. Okay, since we're learning everything, let's go ahead and put it here. The package that we shall use for loading when something is loading. So I always use it. Let me see in a project that I've used this package. I've used this package somewhere. I can use it for loading. So instead of me suffering with loading, I can use that package. So it's called Flutter is a loader. Okay. So come to add that. Okay, and then search Flutter is a loader package. This one, okay. You search this package. Okay, go ahead and add it in your what in your in your project. So it's the one that you're going to use for loading. So I'll go ahead and copy that and then come and add it in what in our project. Okay, so you can come here to terminal and then add it there. So I'll add Flutter is a loading. So after adding it there, of course, there are a few things that you have to do. Oh, 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 I'm still in the previous project. Okay, so come to your terminal and then add Flutter Easy Loading. So after you've added it, uh, there are a few things that you have to do if you read the documentation here. They'll say that you'll have to go and add it in your heart, in your app. Okay, you have to add it in your material app here. You have to add it, you have to initialize it. In your material up here okay 
So we're going to go to our material app and add it in the builder here and initialize it. So if you don't do that, it will not work. Uh, so I'll just simply come here to to our material app. So our material app is here on the main, and then you're going to add it there. So I'm teaching you just all the techniques, okay? So here, come here to the get material app and then add it there. Just add builder and then add easy loader.init, okay, on top of the material app, okay? So do that. Then after, you stop your application and then restart it, okay? Then you restart, you rerun your application so it can be initialized. So after you've added that, oh my God, where am I? Okay, after you've done that, um, So after we've done that, uh, we're going to do what? To create... Uh, we're going to create two methods, okay? We're going to create two methods. One method is going to be for showing the loader. Another method is going to be for hiding the loader. This is not uh, like... Uh, <laughs> it's just my personal techniques. I'm sharing them with you. Okay, so this is our register screen. So it's not that every app must have that or must follow those procedures. This is just a technique I'm sharing with you, okay? So I'm going to create uh, two methods. One, it will be for hiding the load, for showing the loader. And another one is going to be for hiding the loader. So we shall go to our utils function. So, oh my God, where am I? Sorry about that. I've just run the wrong application. Okay, this is the one. All right, so we are going to go to our utils. Remember, I have a class where we're putting our important functions. So I think, well, where is it? Do you, have you created it even here? I don't think you have created it. Let me create it here. So I'll just come here to our models and then I create a new class. So right click new. And then I'm going to create a new what? A new file uh, that I'm going to call uh, utils.dat. Okay. So in this class, so I'm going to put uh, my class of utilities, uh, I mean my methods of utilities. So let's go ahead and create a class, and I'm going to call it utils.dat, okay? I mean utils, that's just a class. All right, so in this class, I'm going to put, for example, you can put a toast, something like that. You can put initialize database inside here, something that you know we have been doing something like these ones. All right, so in this utils, I'm going to put two methods. One method is for initializing the database. I mean, for, for, for showing the loader. Another method is for hiding the loader. So just go ahead and say static void show loader. And then it will be receiving a Boolean. So this Boolean is accepting. It will be telling whether the loader should be dismissible or not. Dismissible means that if someone touches on the loader, it should be hidden. Uh, if it is not dismissible, it means that even if someone touches on the loader, it should not show anything. It should just block the user. So I'll go ahead and check if, so this is how you check. If the loader is shown, it should return. So I just simply say, if easy loading, so you'll have to import it here. It's called easy loading is show. So if it is shown, I don't need to show it again. So if it is shown, I go ahead and return. If it is not shown, I show it by just simply saying easy loading dot show. Okay. So say easy loading dot show, it starts showing. And then you put all the text that you want to show and you put the mask color and you put whether it should be dismissible. So on tap, so if it's dismissible, if someone said it should be dismissible from the method that they call this, I make this one dismissible. If it is not, they do not allow this to dismiss. Uh, so that is it. So that is the method that will be responsible for showing the loader. So it is that, but it's going to save us a lot. So that is for the showing the loader. You get it, eh? So this one is for hiding the loader. So load, hide loader, hide loader. So it is just easy loading. I first check if it is if it is shown, I go ahead and do it and say easy loading, dismiss. Okay, so that one will be able to dismiss the loader. So that is it, okay? So this one will help us uh, in blocking the user not to interact with the application when something is loading in front right, So let's go ahead and now try this. So I'll come here to our, our what? Our validate, okay? 
uh, come to our validate and I try to test if these methods are working before I even proceed. So it's going to be utils, uh, utils dot what? So I import our utils uh, dot show loader, show loader. So is it dismissible? Let me say true. So that is, I should be able to dismiss it. Otherwise, it's going to be block me. So I return. So this is when I, call, I click on submit, this validate method will be called, and then I'll go ahead and show the loader. So I'm testing. So I click on submit, you see our loader is showing. When I click here, it is dismissed. Okay, so that is beautiful. Uh, so that is okay. So our show loader is what is showing. So now let's go ahead and work on the logic of registering the user. Okay, so when someone clicks on submit, uh, when someone clicks on submit, I'll go ahead and uh, I'll go ahead and do and and uh, after so someone has been validated, everything is okay. I'll go ahead and show the loader. So it will it will be utils dot what dot show loader and then dismissible. I make it uh, false, so someone should not be able to dismiss it. Okay. So if it is showing, someone should not be able to do that, dismiss it. Then after, I'm going to send my request, okay? So first of all, I'm going to make this variable to become null here, okay? The response variable to become null because anything can happen, okay? And then after, I'm going to surround this with try and catch. Always surround your things with try and catch. Otherwise, if you don't do that, then it's going to uh, load forever if the error happens. So. I'll surround this one with try and catch. Okay. So I'll say try. I go ahead and say try and then say response equals to await do dot post. I put I'm going to put here the, our HTTP uh, endpoint and then I put data and then do like this. So I can go ahead and put a header. So you know header. I'm going to expect a JSON. So I put headers. Hmm? You have something called options. Eh? You have to pass what you call options. I'm going to explain that. So here, you pass the JSON data, and then you say options, and then you say options, and make sure that you import these options from the deal, and then say headers, and then I put a colon, and then I open curl bracket, and then I say accept JSON content type JSON application stroke JSON. So you have to do those things. Okay, let me put a comma so you can see things clearly. So that is a DO request. So you can pause the video and see how I have uh, done that. So it's going to be able to send a request to online. This one, okay. So if it fails, I can go ahead and do my toast. I can just simply say, uh, if it fails, let's say that it has failed. I can go ahead and... Uh, I can go ahead and I can go ahead and and make this response to be null. <laughs> so if it fails, I just make the response to be null. Okay. So maybe I can put here my string for error message okay you can say maybe error message something like that so if it fails i'll go ahead and get the message by saying error equals to e dot to string okay so it will be good able to get for me the message you can just simply say dot get message something like that okay those to string so it will get for you the reason why it failed so i shouldn't forget to hide the loader immediately when it finishes to load otherwise the loader will show forever so i come here and put hide loader so it is very important to surround your things with that with try and catch so after i've done that let me go ahead and put uh, my response into the console so i check if the response is 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 uh is not successful i go ahead and show the error okay if the response is none if it's successful i'm going just to put the response into the what into the console okay so i just simply put print dot Run type, let me first put the run type into the costal to string and then also uh, I print the data. I want to see what it has really come from the what from the server. So I can go ahead and just put here maybe um, uh, so I can maybe put here 
uh, what I'm going to have me and submit, submit, submit. So here I'm going just to print something and say uh, request start requesting start and then I come here after I've hidden the loader I've just put requesting end it end all right so I just need to know okay all right so that's it now we are going to go ahead and now put here our endpoint. So the endpoint, just like uh, I told you here, uh, you see, we are going to create our constants. For example, the constant for the URL, just like we have it here in environment. Okay, so we're going to create a constant for the API endpoint. So let's go ahead and do that. So we are going to come here and here we can put this constant in these utils, or we can just create a, a special file for constants. So I come here to special file for constant. Um, or let's just put it here in utils. Okay, our constants we can put them here on top of utils. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and say uh, our first constant. So it's going to be constant. Is it string constant or constant string? String constant. I don't know. I think it's constant string. Constant string. Uh, for example, I'm going to put now up what apple i mean api url or api base point so if you just make this one fine think final static static final st or static string i mean static static what static constant okay static final that's enough so it's going to be a static final api url i'm going to put here our api endpoint so you put where your website is where you have hosted your your project so i'll come here and put this one here like this so that's going to be our what our api endpoint okay uh yeah i think that's enough so that's our api endpoint okay so we're going to come now back to our what to our requests register screen so we come back to our register screen so in here we're going to so we're going to pass the, the the api okay so i'm going to substitute the constant i mean so it's going to be utils utils dot what dot api okay uh dot api base url so you know this api comes with its backslash so what i'm going to do i'm just going to put now the endpoint so i've already put this so i'm going to come here and then get the register endpoint it's stroke auth stroke register okay so i should be able to put this one here stroke auth stroke register I think uh, that's all that's all we need so it will substitute the base url and put stroke authentication stroke register and then that will be all that we need all right so let's go ahead and try to send our request now okay so i'll open my console and uh, submit and fill in the form and then we try so beer beer sabiam uh email uh sabia at gmail dot com okay I fill in the form and then put the phone number and then company name And then country currency and then password all right that's it so let's go ahead and the register so I'll clear my console okay and then clear my console and then press here bismillah ah so registering start ah it has finished so you can see it has finished successfully we did not get any error so the response it is in uh, I mean the response data type i mean the data type is response dynamic okay response dynamic and you can see it is 
having some what something here okay which is in string dynamic value all right so let's go ahead and get the data so i think to get the data you just simply put here dot data yeah dot data okay so dot data all right so the data so here okay so you may need first check if it is not null if it is not a map something like that so let's first go ahead and check if i think that we think we are now good to go okay i think we are now good to go because if you okay let's first check if it is not a map then we can say that something was not right okay so So let's check if this one is null, then we know something's not right. If uh, is equal to null, and then just simply put here my error message equals to uh, fail to register because uh, because maybe because response to status. Okay, I put there the status. Okay. Uh, so after checking that, so I've, I've checked the data is not null. The next thing I check if uh, check if it is not map type, if responsible data is not map, it's not a map. So this is how you check if it's not a map. You just simply say dot run response dot runtime dot string dot contains. Uh, no, nope. I'm just going to say if it does not contain map. Okay. So if it does not contain a map, the, dot, the data type, then I know it's not a what? It's not a map. So I just simply say dot runtime dot uh, is it is map? I don't know. Okay, dot, dot to string runtime type the run type dot to string uh, dot to lowercase dot uh, contains map. So if it does not contain the word map, then I know things are not right. So if is not a map i'll go ahead and show the mess the message and say it has failed because that so if it passes there i can now go ahead and know that okay it's a map i cannot start fetching things by use of key and values so i can just simply come here and just put string dot what the data and we see the kind of data that has come back dot to string all right let's try again uh-huh send so you know right now it is going to send an error but it should be in form of success. So you see, uh, company name is required. So you see that, okay, things are now okay, All right? So you know this error is valid, of course, company name is required. Okay, okay, of course, now everything is now fine. You see, like we're getting something that is making sense. All right, so let's go ahead and check if the code is not one, uh, we just know something is not right. So you just simply say, if a response that code is not equal to one, okay? response data code is not equal to one i just go ahead and set error equals to the message and then you should always remember to set state okay uh, i go ahead and say set state and then return okay so if it is if everything is okay i can now just go ahead and put here uh, okay let me just show a snap back and just say successful all right so uh let's go ahead uh, let's go ahead and uh, and do the logic of displaying the error here of displaying the error why should you display the error i think the error should display it here after the register button okay so this is our error so you can pause the video and see how i've been handling this okay uh so we're going to come here to our create uh button i mean create account and then do the logic of adding the error of displaying the error so we go ahead and say if i mean sorry just say error that is if it is not empty so put your question mark if it is not empty we go ahead and put container okay and put with infinity and then display the error otherwise if it is empty we just display the empty container okay something like that let me first do the opposite so i'll just put here the note 
so you can see how it's going to look like uh oh it's not displaying if i remove this all right so uh, i think uh let's give it a color of white all right so there it is uh let's give it some pad some margin agent set dot margin so i've just put here the opposite eh? so it can be able to show at least something eh? so there it is ah uh, yep uh, yep 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 so padding yeah there it is so let's say maybe our error will be here so that will be the error uh, we can give it some uh, kind of radius uh decoration i want to give some box of radius five oh, what the hell color 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 you cannot give color on both sides so that is our what our error you see that's how our error look like um yeah that's how our error we look like uh so what next what next what next what next i think that is okay for me um yep i think that's okay for me so you can pause the video and see that so i'm going to remove this note here okay note i'll remove it so it can be hidden by default okay that is okay so now when you're submitting i have to make sure that this error is 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 reset is set back to uh to to nothing so submit registering so here i'm sending the register i'm going to do set state and then make the error to be nothing by default sorry let me come here yeah and make the error to be nothing by default all right so that's it i hope you've been following very carefully and i hope we are together okay so when it is successful let's say that when the code is one then you shall know that everything is okay so maybe you can need to we may need to convert this one to string because it can come up with a string if it is not one so i have to surround this one but with this all right so i think that's okay i think that is okay that is very okay let's go ahead and re try to recreate again so i'll come here and put some just dummy data and then just for testing purposes okay then go ahead and create account so currency is required so currency why did you say currency should be less than more than three where is the currency validation so currency should be at least if it is less than one if it is empty in simple terms all right so let's go ahead and now submit okay submit okay so you can see the error there oh my god where is error 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 so error so i will not it's not supposed to be like it's just be a plain variable so email is invalid you see our error is there and the email has been validated it is invalid and we're getting this error from response.data message you see so everything is nice now let's go ahead and put now the correct email sabia at gmail.com go ahead and create an account company name is required all right so now you can know now where is um our json i mean our, our, our loader you see here when we're encoding this one it is just only encoding the user information remember the company variables and currency where what where we're just plain variables so what we're going to do we're going to have our upload data so separate and then we add those variables manually so let's go ahead and do that so we can just press a map a map of a, a string comma dynamic and then you say maybe upload upload data equals to then we convert so we convert this and store it there and then okay 
that okay? Okay, like that, I think. Yes, then you go ahead and put company name. So you put there manually as a separate variable, add it to here, and then also put uh, the currency. I think that's it. Okay, then you can come and put here uh, the what? The company data. So you can just simply use uh, JSON. Dot encode and then encode this map data to now a real json string okay so you see i first convert the user model and i save it here in this map data so everything that is in the user is now here and then i go ahead and add the company name and the company as we collected it, them from up there so everything now should be fine all right so let's try to submit now create account I can see registration successful. If you try to get account again, email already registered. So that is now that is very nice. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. So that is very good. That is very, very good. Uh, now we need now just to play and work on now. So it means that even the data is being sent. Back. So let's look at the data that is being sent back. So once it has made sure that this one is not one, so it means that when it is one, everything is is going to bypass this level so everything is success if you see remember the way how we designed our what our 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 response models okay so if i let me remind you here if i send this one so you see we have we have the code the message and the data so we're going to fetch this data and convert it from json back to the what to the user object so this data uh, so it is in here in call data in the data that has come in the in the space of data so if i come and put this one here and go to string i should be able to see that data in the console that has come if it is successful so let's go ahead and change something in the email uh -huh. save then come here and try to submit can you see success you see success and the data, this data that I just put in screen, in string here, I mean in, in, in console, you see, it is having the, 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 the what? It is having the, um, what? Wait, let's see how it is organized. It is having the user, okay? It's having the, 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 the object of the user, and then it has, it has also the object of the company, okay? So we are going to need, uh, most especially, the object of the user. Uh, object of the company can work on it later but let's first get the object of what of the user so how do you get the object of the user i believe uh it is also under here so you may first check if the if the object i hope you can get it like this let's try and see uh, change the email submit so you see, we can be able to get the object of the user. We have the user ID, the username, the, the name, the photo, everything is there. So what we're going to do right now, we're going to write a function that is going to work on the logic of converting this data from, from this value to JSON now. I mean from, from, from the JSON that has come to the what? To the, to the logged in user model. That's what we're going to do. Okay, so it's going to be uh, just a static.
okay so uh sorry about that uh, we're going to create a method from the from the in the in the logged in user model and the purpose of that method is going to be getting the data from uh, from 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 the json and converting it back to what uh to the object itself because this is just plain text so we're going to work on the logic of converting that data from json to the object okay so we're going to add it in the logged in user model so we are just going to say logged in user model and then you guys are going to do something called from json here so let's go ahead and create that variable for from json so i'll just simply come and press here uh, alt and enter okay alt and enter okay so it can it can be able to do what we can be able to create this method of from json so you come here we make this method to be static okay to be static and then you call it uh, it will be returning the logged in user so you make sure that this name is the same as this one logged in user and then we're going to call it from json and then here it will have now the data okay and then what you're going to do we come to this method so you just create it as i've just done it come to this logged in user model say static logged in user and then say from json and then to be receiving the data or the value that's going to convert from json and then after you're going to say now logged in user model because maybe to object okay and then you go ahead and return that object so in here we're going to do now the logic of converting the logged in user i mean the data that has come from what from uh, uh say to convert it now to what to the to, to the to the object of a user so i'll go ahead and first check if uh is equal to null i go ahead and return just a normal user without an id i can go ahead and check if run type does not contain string i can say it does not contain map i can again cancel it i know that it is not a what it is not uh, uh, a logged in user i mean it's not a, a a map it's not a json okay all right so let's go ahead and now start uh, let's go ahead and now start converting okay okay so let's go ahead and start converting so we have our object to here and then let's go ahead and say okay we go ahead and say uh id okay id is going to be so it's going to be int dot parse and then you pass data and then you say id dot to string like this okay like that then you go ahead and get a first name so you're going to be uh, data dot username and then do to string like this we get the password we get whatever so we are converting this json uh, to like this okay so we convert we convert so whatever has come we're converting it uh, it stops at phone number let me go ahead and put this the rest just put them in, in. Okay, so phone number two is done. I put the address. I put the six. Then I put DOB. And then I put status. And then I put the email. All right. So there to convert our object to JSON, from JSON to an object, and then I return the object. So that's it. Okay, that's it. So you name this one as from JSON, just like I have named it there. Exactly, I have named it. So now we come back to register. So we're going to have uh, maybe user. We can say maybe new user equals to uh 
I can say user equals to logged in user from JSON and then you pass this data, okay, which is the data and then the user, okay. So that's it. Now I go ahead and check if the ID of this guy is less than zero, I mean less than one, then I'll know that whole things are not right. So I just simply go ahead and say if ID is equal to zero, then I'll just know that it's failed to pass, okay. I just simply say failed to pass the user. Fail to try to log in with your credentials. Okay, so now this person can be able to log in. I know that everything was successful because I've already checked the one up but it has just failed so i just say someone to try to log in and then i just show the mistake and then i set state and i return from there so if it has uh, successfully done that then i can just simply say uh success and then say maybe welcome and then i display the person the person's name okay like this so i can say person's first name so i will know that this name is coming from what from the internet okay so that is it i know it's a little bit complicated but i've taken you step by step to make sure that you understand everything so also rewatch the video if you don't understand until you get this concept because everything is based on this concept and you just only do it once the rest will just be uh, copy and paste okay so let's go ahead and try to register so uh he's already registered let's go ahead and change the email okay register i can see welcome and the name of the person is there so we have successfully passed the data okay now that's it for today's lecture now in the next lecture we are going to see now how can you log in this user and put them into the your local database and also in the next lecture it's we're going to learn how to make a dynamic logic of how we create these things and generate them you write just logic only one time and then you use that logic to regenerate the rest of your applications by just running a command so that's what we're going to look in the what in the next lectures so don't miss uh, at least right now we have finished that logic now if you go to your uh, hosting for example and uh, i log in as administrator let me log in as administrator the user is admin 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 i hope that's oh my god i mean for three to one did i forget admin admin <laughs> i forgot let me check on the local one i just forget all right maybe if you check your new login to your online database you'll be able to see these companies as administrator You'll be able to see these companies for example uh let me log into the online here i use the um, this email cyber 41 at gmail.com and password is 4321 let's try to log into online to the data cyber 41 at gmail.com try to log in password 4321 Oh, have the issue with credentials. We'll have to check that one out in the next lecture. But the as you can see, I mean, as you can check, you'll see that uh, your system, I mean, your user is uh, successfully logged in. I mean, the account has been successfully created on what? On the server. So, all right, that's it for uh, this lecture. Uh, let's meet in the next lecture where we are going now to do what? Uh, to log in the user and be able to save them on the local machine and proceed to other things and also learn more techniques. So make sure that you understand everything here and uh, this issue of dot logging online, we shall fix in the next lecture. So, all right, see you there and see you then. And don't miss and make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel so that when you publish our next videos, you're always what? You're always notified. Goodbye and see you tomorrow.